welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Nick Matassa. You know him as Stasa23. Uh, Stasa, uh, or Nick, is one of those guys, uh, one of the few guys that I'm referring to when I talk about trusted voices in knife YouTubery. This is the guy, this is one of the guys I'm talking about. People who have their eye on all the new stuff, they get to try it out, and they test the knives, too. I mean, when I get a knife, I it sits in my cabinet. I enjoy it. I don't put it through a battery of tests. Nick is one of those guys who does so. Also, he just has a great channel and great taste in knives. So I wanted to bring him on to talk about his picks of the year 2021. He just released uh, three... Uh, three or four videos uh, featuring his favorites in different price categories. And uh, and then he's got his favorite buys of the year. So uh, that that is quite a nice video with some pretty sweet knives. And I'm really looking forward to talking to Nick about that. But before we do, uh, make sure you download us on uh, on your various podcast apps, whatever you like. Uh, and you can continue listening to this show if you can't finish it here, uh, there and listen to it in the uh, in the audio world. Uh, check us out on all these kind of uh, podcast apps right here, over to my right or left, depending on your perspective. And uh, also, if you think what we do here is a, a, a value, go to Patreon, check us out there. Check this out. Jim, for your convenience, uh, convenience, just put a QR code there. You can scan that, go right to Patreon. And uh, we got a couple of levels of support there. And uh, our top tier... Uh, you get all of the things you get, interview extras and such, uh, but uh, you also get entered in to win a knife every month. So check it out. Uh, the quickest way to do that is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Now in its 42nd edition, Knives 2022 is the annual showcase of the most remarkable custom and factory, factory manufactured, manufactured knives in knives one in remarkable one collection. More. Get your copy today at thenifejunkie.com slash knives2022. So I'm here with Nick. Nick, Stasa23. Nick, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Ready for the holidays to kind of get wrapped up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. So have you gotten yourself any, uh, any Christmas knives, any gifts for yourself yet for being such a uh, great guy? No, usually I try during Christmas to kind of lay off. It's the kid's time. Um, I, I, I had Christmas all year, so yeah, it's their time to shine. And I try, I don't say I do that all the time, but I don't, I, I have pre-orders coming in. What do you have? I uh, just got the let's see the thick boy mm. the EMP EDC thick boy. I did an unboxing of this the other day. Uh, cool little knife. Definitely like it a good bit. And um, I saw I, he did a, a version two of the nimble mm. this knife right here, and uh, it had like frag patterns and different variations and i liked one of those more so this one will probably get moved along and um i'll have a new one coming in shortly very nice i mean you know we have to remember about self-care we have to take care of ourselves too you know we're looking out for uh, the the kids at christmas time but it is good to have knives coming in of course i'm i am uh, sort of half joking about that um <laughs> you know it is it's always a pleasure to have something something new but uh yeah you're right this time of year you got to think of other people but i am interested in your take on what we saw over this past year um i am not one of i am not a knife uh, collector who gets everything new uh that's out there and i don't really have my finger on the pulse i just kind of know people like you who have your finger on the pulse and and your taste and mine correspond uh, a lot. And so I'm interested to hear uh, what you liked best this year. Um, uh, but uh, first, uh, let me ask you, what were you carrying today? The, the thick boy that was in the pocket. Uh, also, the TRM uh, Adam, 
I got these uh, new titanium scales for it. Uh, I think last week, I mean, maybe beginning of the last month. Uh, like that a lot. And also, I just took it out of my pocket, pocket pin, the clip hooked to the pocket. And that's about it. I was babysitting today, so it was a light carry for me. I like that. I like that. Uh, two uh, two knives and a sweet pen is light light carry for you. Uh, before <laughs> we get into all your uh, your favorites and your picks and such, I, w- I want you to sort of distill for people who are listening who might not know uh, your videos and your your taste and your reviews. And if you don't, you got to go check out Stasa Twenty Three on both YouTube and Instagram. Uh, but YouTube is where I <clears throat> think you especially shine because of the commentary and uh and then also what you actually do with these knives but uh let people know what your wheelhouse is what is your taste for great knives <laughs> i I'm a, I'm a garbage can i like them all but you know as far as aesthetics go i'm a sucker for a clip point i love you know my favorite design of all time is got to be the landy's clip mm. it gets beautiful um, and that's just, to me, it's just when I think about knives, you know, or what a knife is, I think about a clip point. I don't know. I guess it was the old buck days, you know, carrying, uh, I think I, it was a 55, the smaller one. And, um, I, I'm, I like, you know, new steels. I like trying out new things. Um, I, I love trying out new companies, you know, just cause I want to, it's it's really cool to better bring uh, new things to my subscribers that you know maybe you're just getting into the, the hobby or they're they're on a very tight budget and they don't know whether they should spend their money on this this company that they don't know a whole lot about you know but I can do it so I like to you know bring it to them and you know stay away from that company you know <laughs> don't mm-hmm. act right now don't don't buy them you know or they're excellent. You know, it's a great bang for the buck. That kind of stuff brings me joy. So, okay. Well, well that begs the question. Um, what are the, uh, answers to those two questions, uh, over this past year, who would you stay away with, uh, stay away from not necessarily because they're bad, but because maybe they're not quite there yet. Uh, like Eugene Kwan might say, or, or, uh, what do you think people should really pay attention to, uh, because they're excellent. And they just sort of emerged this year. Um, well, for me, I mean, and, I, and it it shows for how hard it is to get their knives. But Vero Engineering, if you haven't ever experienced a Vero, uh, he is brilliant when it comes to design and little things that he incorporates. They're definitely a company to keep your eye on, and you know if you can. <laughs> get a hold of one of their knives he's doing bigger batches now they're a good company to um to watch um now i i don't like doing this but uh where is it at there's a company a new company that they're on their way to greatness i think Mm -hmm. an overseas company but they're not quite there yet and that is uh miguron knives interesting okay why do you, why do you think that? Um, I, first of all, the one that you have in your hand right now, I'm not sure what that's called. Um, I I want to say Valona, but it's not. It's it's got. I think it's Akari or something like that. Yeah, Akaris or something. Yeah, I can't pronounce any of their names. So <laughs> that's why well, I put it on the screen. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, uh, it's funny that you hold that up because I had through the past round group, I had the Migaron Pagos. Uh, which is a front flipper. Very nice. I swear it was uh, seen to me and I, to my relatively untrained eye, it seemed like a two sun knife to me. And, uh, and, and that, that can be both good and bad as far as I uh, am concerned. I don't, I, know. I, the I, don't get, I don't get as much of a two sun vibe, but I definitely, you know, scratch my head when I'm using the knife mm-hmm. Um that I felt that I felt this night like company before, you know, whoever's actually making the knives. Uh, I have had three of their budget models now, and I am currently testing. This one made one of my list, um, testing this one 
I forgot the name of it already, but it's a front flipper, nice and smooth, M390, but it's cool. Th they did some great things here and they fell short of, in a few places. That's why I say, you know, they're so close to being a really, really uh, high top tier company. Okay, so that's a that's a very diplomatic way of handling that question, and I appreciate that because uh, I don't think there's enough time to sit around watching negative uh, knife videos and knife reviews uh, on rare occasion, maybe. But uh, to hear uh, these guys aren't quite there yet, but they're on their way to getting there is a positive spin on on the question, who do you think is bad? <laughs> but, uh, uh, but no, I, I, uh, all jokes aside, I, my, I was impressed with the Migron I had here, the, the Pagos. It was not my style. It had inlaid. I'm not a huge carbon fiber fan. It had that. It had a lot of micro milling, uh, which is, uh, which I appreciate, but, um, uh, you know, it just, I kind of felt like it's, this is someone else's knife, but it's a good quality. Uh, you yeah. said that, that you felt like you had experienced that knife before like that like it was a company you knew already yeah it just i don't know there's something about it uh it, and you know it's hard to say because some of these companies you don't know if they're an actual machine shop you know yeah it, you don't know who's really making them i mean right we don't right, right when it comes to overseas production at least um but they, they just have certain things. Now, I see some things that kind of make me feel Tucson a little bit, like the the, the screws, type of screws they use. Um, and there was something on one of the budget knives, too, that I could kind of see that. Uh, they use the same type of micarta. Mm -hmm. But the <laughs> only reason that I'm not sure is because Tucson can do a good job of thinning out that blade grind. Like they can put a nice and thin grind on it. And I miked all my knives. This one was probably the best out of box that I got. It's a pretty good knife, especially for the money. I can't complain here because I think it has really good looking lines to it. It does. Um, you know, it's an attractive knife. It's very comfortable in hand. And it's a it's a decent slicer, but um yeah, I think it was maybe 20, 22,000 behind the edge, which is fine. No problem. Mm -hmm. But the blade grind on this thing is, I don't know if it's the, the, the primary is very off or the sharpening job was very off because one side is 30 degrees and the other side is 22. <laughs> Whoa. And all of them are almost like that. All four of them. Well, I haven't, I haven't sharpened this one yet. It, it, it almost seems like uh, it's on purpose. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> the way, the way it was would, like, you know, exact. Like two of them were exact. Is there? Would there? Would there be any reason, practical reason, to do that? The reason I ask is, uh, shortly after my wife and I got married, we got the Shun knives for our for our wedding. You know, the Kershaw, or it's a Kai brand. Uh, mm -hmm. of knife and i i brought them in to get sharpened at uh like a william sonoma or a place like that and the guy's like oh i can't sharpen that those are special it's like 20 degrees on one side and you know 30 on the other and i remember thinking why would they do that uh and i don't know if the guy was just telling me he didn't feel like doing work or <laughs> or if that was the truth was <laughs> yeah probably would there be any benefit to having two different grinds if it's uh, outside of a chisel grind to having two different angles like that. I mean, I, I couldn't think of a, a reason unless um, unless you were trying to speed it up some because say if you have this this bevel already laid with the burr and you don't want to have to lay this bevel in, you just raise it up a little bit and hit that you know burr <laughs> much quicker. Right, right, That's right, the only right. thing I can think of. I don't know. Okay. I'm I'm guessing that it's it's a, a jig setup, you know, and some sort of wheel setup. And one wheel just off. So that's why they were consistent, at least <laughs> wrong, consistent. But yeah, yeah, consistently wrong, but wrong. Yeah. Okay. So we're about to get into it. But uh, one last thing What do you do to evaluate knives that come across your, your desk, whether it's a knife that you buy because you have, uh, you know, you have the hots for it, or whether it's something that someone is loaning you for you to evaluate? What's your process? 
Uh, usually, I usually try to make sure I um, aesthetically like it. You know, I got to have at least some light for the knife because I find that if I if I think it's an ugly, ugly knife, mm -hmm. for the most part, I just can't get into the review. I just won't get excited about it, whether good or bad. And I could end up crapping on the knife. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not. Yeah. I'm trying to make you make the best decisions with your money. That's, that's it. <laughs> um, but I, I, I always, I, I like, you know, I look at, you know, uh, if it looks like it'd be ergonomic, depending on how the handle set up, where the clips at, um, I, I, I try to kind of get, um, maybe some background on the knife before, you know, like, uh, we'll, where did the design come from? If there was any kind of stuff like that, what type of steel and uh, kind of get my mindset set up for the knife before I get it. Usually, you know, like what I'm envisioning the knife to be like, and it's kind of try to match it to my first impressions. And that's, you know, that's why I do unboxings just so I can show you how wrong you can be sometimes, you know, <laughs> Well, do, do you um, watch other people's, other trusted names such as yourself? Do you watch other people's videos, their unboxings, their first impressions? Or do you try and lay <laughs> off uh, before you have your first uh, experience? Uh, any knife that um, I call like a high profile knife, I guess you could say, you know, that I know there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. I make sure I don't watch any of them. Because I don't want, I don't want, you know, subconsciously you're, you're picking that information up no matter what you do. And I, I, I won't lie. After I do my review, my review, I binge watch all of them. <laughs> I do. Yeah. It's funny. I'm like, you have the knife. Why are you so much? I think it's just because I want to reassure that I'm not just completely in left field about something, you know? Yep. Yep. Well, sometimes, I mean, those those of us, uh, you know, before I ever did anything on YouTube, I would still do that. I would get a knife. Of course, I would I would watch the requisite 8 million videos before I bought the knife, and then I would get it. And then to justify the purchase, I would watch the videos again or watch more videos, you know, people saying, yeah, this is mm -hmm. great. It's a great purchase, you know, Bob. Good, good job. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't waste your money there. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of important. Um, you were talking about, uh, evaluating the looks, the aesthetics, that's a big deal to me. Uh, obviously without good ergonomics, it doesn't matter, but what, uh, and I'm not asking you to crap all over a knife, but tell me an ugly knife. Oh, and, and I'll break the ice. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go out on this limb and I love this knife, but it's ugly. And, and that, and that is the shirt. <laughs> You're never going to guess. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was literally looking at it. I was like, when I first saw this knife, I thought it was the most hideous thing ever. <laughs> but I think just the, I, I love the utility task of that blade shape. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of grew me to love. It. Now I hate the proportions. I think it's the most mm -hmm. unproportional knife ever. Um, it reminds me of remember that old Emerson they used to have that had the full size handle with the little sharp blade. Yeah, this little stubby one. Yeah. Yeah, right. the, the snub nose or whatever. Yeah. I used to hate that knife because it was just, it was driving my OCD tendencies crazy. I'm like, oh my God, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Uh, I tend to try not to get those type of knives in. I'm looking around, seeing if I have anything that I think is ugly. Um, um, I don't really, I don't know. I, I, I guess my problem is, is if I keep the knife, I grow a bond with that knife. So it's like, I understand, you know, it's kind of like you're looking at, even if your kid was happened to be ugly, you're not going to say they're yeah. ugly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, so, um, I think, Here's one that I, I I liked from pictures and the videos that they put up, but once I got it, I kind of stopped liking it, and it's odd for me. And that's this knife right here. Ooh, this is the uh, the vehement knives. Yeah, knife. It just there like I, there's certain things I like. like. I love CPM3V. I love the fact that Medford did it. He does an excellent job. 
It's got great action. Uh, I like the thinness of it. But you would think when cutting with this, you would think that this is a full-size Medford Marauder with the thickness. Like, you can literally feel the thickness behind here. You know, like, mm -hmm. when, when they're thick, you feel that drop off. Yeah. yeah it's almost 30,000 spot on the edge. Wow. I mean, and that, that's – it showed in the testing. And – this decision to put this clip up here yeah yeah was a bad bad call like it, even you know first impressions just putting it in my hand it, it hurts i know my hands are you know not the average hands but um it, it was a bummer because I, I really had high hopes for this knife because you know especially us usa made knife that that's you know and that beautiful clip point blade is yeah is, exactly. It, it it's got a beautiful profile, and that fuller is nice. But the the funny thing is is Medford can take a really fat slab of steel and get it to a thin hollow. You know, like a I I used to have the Praetorian, and yeah. uh, you know it's got a it's got a a very uh, um, short grind. You know, from the edge to the top of that hollow grind. But it's so deeply hollow ground in that thick blade steel that it gets really sharp. Now, of course, you can't cut an apple with it; it'll wedge it open. But, but behind the edge, it's thin. It just, it just sort of abruptly, uh, kind of. So, in other words, my my point is they are very capable of doing excellent hollow grinds. I'm surprised they didn't do it on this knife in particular. Yeah. I then that's the, exactly what I was thinking whenever I pulled the trigger on it. Um, especially the fact that the UCPM 3V, which is a very tough impact resistance deal. Like, I mean, I don't know if you ever seen any of those videos back in the day when Strider used to test those monkey edge 3V yeah. SNGs and they would rip them through center block balls and stuff, you know, it, it can handle it. So there was no reason why he couldn't have done like my slim Praetorian, my Medford slim Praetorian. That's what I was expecting this to be mm. that type of thinness. I mean, that thing comes down to like 15,000 behind the edge, you know? And like you said, it, it's abrupt, but uh, it's, you're not going to notice that until you're cutting food or something like that, that will separate. But, uh, I, you know, I didn't, I tried to be as nice as possible about the knife because this is his first go. Her first mm -hmm. go knife, you know, he did a lot of stuff right. And they, yep. they sold out quick, you know. For, first go folder. His Yeah, his, that's what I meant, folder. Yeah, his yeah, fixed blades I heard are awesome. Oh, my God. I mean, they're, they are really beautiful. He, he does them very limited. And they're, they're all his takes on classic combat fixed blades. And that's so up my alley. Uh, yeah. I've always wanted to get my hands on a viewmate, so I was very excited, you know, when when uh, I heard he he was making that, and and when I saw the design, I was like, that is the perfect design for him, knowing all of his like it. It just looks like how he would go to a folder with his, uh, you know, his design past. Yeah, yeah. I I did re like before I before I like I saw the DLT. Uh, video of this before they actually hit and it was like i think they posted it like the beginning of the week and the drop was gonna be on that saturday maybe or whenever they did it and i immediately went research you know because i didn't know a whole lot i had heard of him and i, I was actually following him but i follow a lot of people you yeah. know that i just forget over the years and um and I was over the moon about it, you know, after reading and then being like, oh, that's him, you know, and I remember seeing this fixed blade and I was like, wow. And then other people talking about it. So I was, I was super excited. And I, you know, I don't know. It, it, like I said, it, it fell short for me. It might make some people super happy and that that's, that's great. Just not for me yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what he does next. I'll still, I don't, I'm not one of those guys that, you know, get something like that and I'll never buy a knife of right, his. Right. Man, that, that's silly in my eyes, you know, <laughs> nobody's perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially on their first outing. And with me, the thing that, you know, I always look for a knife 
for a knife that I'm really excited about, I look for some reason not to buy it. So uh, for this <laughs> one, it was the fact that the blade is under three and a half inches. I'm like, OK, good. I don't have to buy that one because if it were over, it, it would be a moral imperative. All right. So let's let's get to your favorites of 2021. Uh, as I mentioned before, you put out a couple of videos with different um different sort of uh, money denominations so that people who are looking part of part of your mission with the Stasa 23 channel is to evaluate and review knives so that people can um, kind of determine whether or not they want to spend their hard earned cash on, on a knife um, that they might think looks good, but they don't really know if it's worth it. So uh, that's kind of the, the, the long and short of it, right? Yeah, pretty much. And I, I think uh, one thing about me and, you see a lot of a lot of channels, you know, they they start out with the budget knives and then they get that taste of the higher end and they keep climbing and climbing and then they they don't ever look back. You know, there's a lot of them and it's it's a trend I've watched over the last seven years, you know, from watching YouTube. But I like them all. I don't care the price. If the if the design speaks to me, it can be in eight CR, seven CR. I like the design and it, it cuts and it locks up safely. I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. it don't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I am with you. I, uh, I can get excited over a $3 Walmart bait knife. Mm -hmm. uh, I got this zilch uh, from Gerber at uh, REI I saw that. for 20 bucks. This thing is really good. And if they did some material upgrades, it, it's, it's a great design and it's got really, really nice action. Uh, you know, I'm embarrassed. I'm not I tell you, yeah, that's that. one company that oh, I just want them to just just upgrade just a little bit because they're close. They're getting so close to being yep. um an let me just put an an enthusiast. You know, yes. of course, they're making their money from people who just know the name. You know, mm -hmm. people that don't care what type of knife it is, but they know Gerber and Kershaw. You know, that's <laughs> they. So. The, this this could be the zilch could be their bug out if they put a little more uh just in terms of materials yeah the, you know it's got great action it's it's sturdy it's stout okay enough about that <laughs> let's talk about your your picks all right what you what you want me to start with let's start with the with the 50 and under um I, I all right i grabbed um Christmas I, you know with for time's sake, I just grabbed. Uh, I got the one that surprised me the most this year in that that category. Okay, and had me excited. You know, this one I carried a lot, and I bought two of them. That's you know, I really liked it, and that's coming from a company I've never owned a knife from before, and that is the Petrified Fish Beluga. Oh. This knife right here is was a a standout. Um, the the one that I reviewed had green G10. And a blasted blade. Um, they were out of the micarta ones. This is the micarta one, and the micarta one, of course, I love, <laughs> absolutely love it. Super smooth, very very smooth action, and uh, it just it performed excellent. It's an excellent slicer, and I mean, I, both of them were ridiculously smooth. Very very smooth action on them. This and, this people have been talking about this. That okay. So if 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 you don't know, uh, um, if you didn't it, you know, if you didn't hear right, it, it is the company is called Petrified Fish. Um, I could just hear my dad saying, "What the hell did he just say?" So yeah, it, it is called <laughs> Petrified Fish. That's the name of the company, and they are they are putting out some very impressive, uh, yeah, Im and impressively priced, uh, meaning low uh, low priced high quality knives. Yeah, this definitely. this beluga. Why? So why have people been raving about the beluga in particular? It, it it's just it, it's a very comfortable in the hand knife. It's a fifty dollar knife that has the action of some uh, four hundred dollar knives. You know, I mean, mm. it both of them. Both of them are on point. I mean, really. Well, this one's just breaking. I just got this one like a couple weeks ago. My other one is a guillotine. It'll it'll like fall. It's a front flipper for those who like it. I'm not a front flipper fan, but it has this nice fuller in there that you can you can do all the fun stuff with it, spidey flick it or the you know the thumb roll or thumb flick. It's a it's a good all around knife for 50 bucks. The K110 uh, has a proper heat treat on it. I, I sharpened it 
It held, it deburred quickly, easily, and it was very clean. Um, deep carry pocket clip, both sides, so I don't have to leave out the lefties, you know. Mm. It, it it was nice. This is one that I the only person I ever watched a video on about this knife was Love Them Knives because he he reviews everything. Yeah. And I had seen him review one of their knives a long, long time ago. And I don't know if it was the beluga I saw, but when you know that segment I do on my channel, Amazon Knife of the Month mm -hmm. fix. Well, I was looking for a second knife to put in that category. And I mean, you can only, I got a, like, you know how you can set up a list on Amazon? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a list that's a mile long. It says Nick's, it says my YouTube channel, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, because I used to call it window shopping and I put it in the cart. My wife was like, why, did it, why is there 47 things in the cart right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, shopping, I forgot yeah. to take them out. So that's kind of how I stumbled upon the Beluga. Okay. And then after I did the video, I started watching it and it was like, Everybody was blowing up about it. I was like, yeah. awesome. That's awesome that I wasn't the only one that thought that, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I, I knew and it wasn't because of my video because there were videos that kind of popped up at the same time, you know, about the knife. So uh, I, I asked the question uh, uh, because I um, on Thursday Night Knives a couple of weeks ago, I was showing off this. It's the Arcona <laughs> Nettle. <laughs> That was that was my most surprising knife of the year, and oh, really? I think it may be made by the same company. <laughs> it well, I was talking about how uh, how awesome this is, and how uh, um, I'm not much of a front flipper aficionado, but how wonderful this is. And and I asked other people, you know, who who likes front flippers, and what do you think is the best? And and they came back to that Beluga time and time again. Um, so. But but now I'm fascinated. So so tell me about your Arcona experience. And we got the same one, the blue. Are they yeah. all blue? I think they're all yeah, blue. the blue. Mine, let's see, my light's probably not showing it off that good. My I don't I don't have my lights set up how I normally do because I'm not I'm not in the spot that I'm normally in. But uh mine out of box, I'm sure just like yours, I mean, is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. super smooth. I didn't think I'd be able to use that thumb hole. I don't know. Some people might not be able to, but I can easily get my thumb in there enough to where I can use it. Cause I was like, I'm not like when a knife is only a dedicated front flipper, I tend not to carry it that much. Cause it, they just, it, they bother my hands. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could spotty flick it, but I can't, Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's a comfortable knife. Uh, I'm, I'm not real keen on, you know, all the, 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 <laughs> extra hardware like you know but i understand why it's there and i don't know about you but the internal milling that's the first time i've seen it done like that on on a knife like this what you mean it's got like the little blocks i don't know it's 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 cool looking i don't know I mean, it's yeah, not yeah, that different it's just got like in yeah. the actual micarta you know, you don't see that like that that often. Oh, mine has uh, nested liners in it. Uh, mine actually has nested liners, and it has. Yeah, liners. mine mine does, and but the the nested part only comes to halfway, right? I think it no. stops right, not uh, halfway, but it stops right there. No, mine mine goes all the way through, and it's. Uh, you know, mine probably does too. Now that you say that, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I I think the knives he's been bringing in are really cool. Uh, yeah. I also I also got the um, uh, the the crystal aurora from from him with the fuller, and I just think this thing is so great. And it, ordinarily, it's not the kind of you know, I'm not too into flippers, uh, but man, this one is just I love it. Yeah, I I almost bought that one just because I, I I find you know you. Especially reviewing knives, they also it, it kind of can get boring at times, you know, just that monotonous same exact thing over and over again, and something like that that is so off the rails, mm -hmm. but that that in the middle hollow grind like that. Yeah, I that right there just piqued my interest, and I was like, that's pretty darn cool, you know. It it's not gonna be for everybody, but. I like different stuff from time to time, you know, yeah. it's not going to make up my collection, but 
it's 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 fun to get something like that in variety be in the spice of life so what else do you have uh in this 50 category um like i said in in like i wasn't trying to 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 crap on the company because mm -hmm. this one made it made the list because it's a it's a really good knife uh as far as the lines go the action super smooth the grind like i said that's that's the main thing and the uh the lock access to it mm -hmm. uh, this one is the closest to you know a perfect not perfect but you know as close as they get got with the three i have um my valona the bigger one than this it's like a four inch blade i think uh it's a nice one too but mine had lock rock from factory and um my the smaller one uh, the front flipper that's a dedicated front flipper. It was too hard to front flip because it was too polished up top mm. and it was uncomfortable and it was rather thick because it had a really sharp grind. So um, other than that, I, I like, I like the Valona design. I just didn't, you know, uh, I'll tell you, here's one and this is kind of going up a little bit more, but one more that I don't have in reach that, I, I don't know why it took me so long to pick up is one from Kubi, which has stepped it up over the moon this year. That's I mean, I they're, I used to look at their stuff cause I've had a lot of their older knives and I was just like, nah, just, it just felt cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no way around it. It felt cheap. Well, they definitely made a change. I mean, I don't know if they, they, you know, bought new machine CNC's or what, but yeah, that's the one right there. <laughs> that night that's on the screen. That's pretty cool. I like that. That thing, that's the Parson Blade Works uh, collaboration with Kubi. Oh. One of them. That's his Nova. It is so comfortable. And the way he designed the flipper tab is how I wish all flippers, because I'm not a really big flipper fan, but, you know, the, the worst offender Flipper, in my opinion, is Ender, and I, but I still oh, love Ender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that hook forward. Mm -hmm. This one does just the opposite, you know, hooks back, just like Ferrum Forge does an excellent job of that, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it slices good. I think that I, I used to hate black blades, but for some reason, I, I, I started to, I don't know, I like that character it you get when you get those scratches in it. So, yeah. yeah I, I'll, I'm 50 50. I'll go. I'll buy one and then the next one won't be. So, you know what it's like, Nick? It's kind of like this, uh, the gratification you get from snail trails and blasted titanium. Yeah. You know, um, on, on a black blade like that. Yeah. Most definitely like that. Chris Reeve, Sabenza that has just a blasted. I had one that I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that I sold it, but at the time I just, you know, the only way I could get another knife was to sell that one, you know? Yeah. So, um i had to let it go but it had so many nice the patina i called it <laughs> from yeah. my scratches in my pocket it was so nice looking and i think <laughs> the guy that i sold it to i think he that's why he wanted it so he could make it look like he carried it <laughs> hey man I, I i bought uh you know a few months back i bought an omnum on that had oh, been, I've been through, looking <laughs> it's, it's been through many hands i'm not sure how many owners this thing has had but it is sweet and it came you know like like an old pair of jeans like i'd you know worn it for years uh on the range but yeah uh, what a great knife this thing is that's gonna be that's the next my next crk is it'll probably it'll be either one drop point or tanto and i could kick myself because the um on didn't do it for me for a while because for some reason whenever i hold it that lock bar tab mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It bothers it, your finger. Yeah, it bothers my hands. And um yeah, the way it comes down like that. And yeah. it, it doesn't bother anybody else, but it, it just seems to bother my hands. And uh I stayed away from my local shop, had a Tanto brand new for the longest time. And I was like, nah, nah. And now that I want one, no. You, you know, they they're they charging ridiculous prices on the secondary right now for them. Oh yeah, yeah. I got mine for a for a song. I mean, relatively speaking. Uh so I couldn't I couldn't pass that up. 
Um, no. So uh, what, let, let's hear one more knife under 50 that you think people need to know about uh, before we move up to a, to a higher grade. Let me think if I, I'm trying to think what was my number three pick. Uh, I don't know if this one is, this is on that borderline, but this is a new, the, oh, the, yeah. cow, the, what is it? The Towser K? Towser K, yeah. Yeah. This is the smoothest, one of the smoothest knives in my collection. <laughs> like, like look, look at that. And there's no blade play. This thing is ridiculous. Uh, now, I will say that I originally fell in love with this one the most. Mm -hmm. I did, you know, I've always owned the mini. I've owned two of the, two of the minis. I still own, I own the one exactly like this in the mini. And I just, I never wanted this one for some reason. He's talking about the Kaiser Sheepdog, right? Yeah, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Kaiser Sheepdog and my Carta non-flipper blade hole. Yeah, it's nice. Well... I, I bought this one. I don't remember why I even bought it. I bought it for a video, I think. And I started using it, I think, after the hurricane. I had a whole bunch of boxes to break down because we just moved in our new house. And I put this thing through some work. And this thing slices amazing. It's got a nice thin grind on it, that high blade profile, and it's super comfortable in hand. Uh, they do a good job with their 154 CM. I, I've noticed that on the last few that I've tested. Um, and this one just reminds me of it even more. Yeah. It, except the Towser K has uh, just a remarkably smooth action. Um, I probably would give the leg up on this one a little bit more, but being the smoothest on this one, if you want a smooth knife, <laughs> this is a good one. And I, I, I got to say, uh, <clears throat> the Towser K is just beautiful. I think it's got some, uh, it hits all the all the lines just right. Um, I don't know. It's a, What is that? Is yeah. that 154 also? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because uh, I think that was why I decided to pull the trigger on it. Uh, yeah, 154. God. Yeah, you know, another thing I like about it is, um, rather than the Sheepdog, as far as aesthetics go, this is the one I would choose. I like how they this isn't super tall like the sheepdog yes. has a pretty tall blade yeah. and they thin this out to make it you know look pretty normal when it's closed and that handle material uh on that version this also comes in a red micarta but the handle material that you're holding on to they were um you know made a big deal about that what is that rich, material rich light rich light that's right yeah i think i'm pretty sure rich light is the it's uh, like a form of micarta that uses a non, I think a non-toxic resin because that's something that, you know, I don't, a lot of people don't talk about, but I learned that from whenever I was doing a lot of the knife mods that the, the, the epoxy resin is very, very toxic, you know, in your lungs, it could tear your lungs up bad. I wore a respirator all the time, but that was that's a pretty cool idea you know why not use resin that's non-toxic you know i don't know so. nick i don't know i think it's part of the nerfing of the world here i think i think we need to go back to regular toxic micarta that's what <laughs> i want in my head no i'm just kidding but uh i i think it looks beautiful that sort of midnight blue uh, yes. sort of blue black um I, I want to get the Towser K, but I'm really uh, conflicted as to whether I'll get the red micarta, which is one of my favorite materials, not just the micarta, but I love it in red and maroon, that kind of thing. Well, I'll tell you this. If that's your favorite color, I would go with that one because they use like they use linen. The red's a linen micarta, mm -hmm. and it has that nice, soft texture to it. Oh, I love it. Like that's what's on this one. Yeah, this one's a linen, too. And that mm. that feeling they you they do a great job of you know they don't bring it up too high in grit to where it's a have has that slick you know polish right. to it right it gives you that tactile grip and it still looks nice with the layers you can see the different layers yeah yeah you can really um you can really get a bead on the contouring just at, uh, from looking at it like that um, yeah and All they the used little to... milling they did too in this in the towels I don't know if it's showing up or not. Put it a little closer to your camera. Let's, Let's see. see it. It's like some hexagon. Hold on. Let me, let me. There you go. Oh, yeah. It looks like the. Higgs it's a hexagon over hexagon. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. 
man and and just the the shape of the handle looks extremely ergonomic yeah so let's uh let's talk about uh a little bit higher up um we don't have to be strict about the hundred dollar it doesn't have to yeah. necessarily be hundred dollar but uh let's let's talk about the next tier up you know the way i um i like you uh like it all and and at this stage of my collecting, I'm definitely willing to spend more than I used to, but I'm always willing to spend a little bit too. Like I've been going through a, a little Civivi kick. I love this sucker. The, yeah. The, um, <clears throat> the co is it the cogent? The, the cogent. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't end up picking one up because they were supposed to send me one and I wasn't going to buy another one if they were sending <laughs> it to me, which yeah. I, I probably should have. Cause I, I could have just gifted it to the channel. Um, which I'll probably, I might still do. So, um, let's see, going up, uh, I'll tell you, this is one that I don't know why Kubi knives don't get the traction, uh, like they do on some people's channels for me. And, and, and concept, I can, none of my concept videos ever do good. I don't know if it's cause I'm not the, the first, even I, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, this Kubi, this is another Parson Designs um, uh, collaboration with Kubi knives. Oh, that's cool! And I'll tell you what, it's 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 probably smaller than you like, Bob, but it's in that medium to smaller range. It's about a seven and a quarter inch, I think, overall. But he does a great job, like just like on that Nova that we were talking about earlier. His ergonomics on the knife, I don't I can usually know right off the back that it's gonna be comfortable at least. Mm -hmm. Um my buddy Brian, you know, Brian Transparent Knives. Yeah, he talked about it first and his experience with it. And I and, and even though they're friends, I know he's not gonna lie, you know. I mm -hmm. he's a straight up guy. And he's what kind of got me to try it out, you know, because it's a $160 knife with S30V. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, and that's overseas, and that's so expensive for that. Which you, I'm like, nah, it's not that, you know, it's yeah, it wasn't last year. So no. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, as long as as long as they do it good, I rather S30 than S35, because I know a lot of companies don't do a good job with S35. Yeah. Um the I I'm not I am I'm not the biggest fan of the front flipper, but you know, it it works well, it's smooth. It's a compact knife. And it slices really nice. It's not super thin, but it, it's it's thin enough to where it's a fun one to use. Uh, this one kind of surprised me, Wait, and I was kind of shocked that more people didn't, you know, love the knife. Before you uh, put it down, before you put it down, uh, I, I want to talk about it for a second. First of all, I think it is an absolutely beautiful profile. Uh, from the handle all the way around the blade, it's a beautiful worn clip. Uh, this reminds me, sort of, uh, if if the Jerry Moen mongoose had a romantic evening with the booze blades. Um, I don't know any booze blades knife. Yeah, this is what would uh, come out. Uh, I, know, I, I I can definitely see that. I I think it's really beautiful, but especially that blade. That blade. Yeah, the cool. blade. I've been really i think this year more so than anything i've been drawn i've always liked warnies mm. but this year i've really because i i really when you know all the testing i do you really start to see you know what works best for the type of cutting you do the most and for me you know besides the testing i'm just i don't i i'm disabled so i, I can't even work and the most cutting I do is breaking down every box in this damp in my house. All right. Um, so I like something that I'm gonna be able to put a lot of power behind that cut. And you know, what's better than a worn clip for that? Yeah. You don't have to worry about it sliding out, you know. You can use it for self-defense if you needed it. You know, yeah. I couldn't because I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> but but you're talking about sliding out because of that straight edge. Mm -hmm. where a uh, where many other blades like a drop point or a clip point uh, where that edge trails upward uh, yeah. you start to lose cutting power as your arm arcs you know your natural yes. arc of your body but that that uh, worn cliff uh, just keeps digging in yeah and and in another positive about what we just talked about 
you know, being that this is not a four inch blade or it's not a fixed blade with a huge, you know, blade on it, a warning and a small blade like that too is, you know, it's, it's pretty much a more effective than say like a four inch with a yeah. deep belly. Cause yeah, you'll it's, see. <laughs> it's like a force multiplier having, yeah. having that, that blade shape. Uh, remind us the, the make and model. Of this that. is the uh, Kubi Barracuda. Kubi Barracuda. I don't remember the numbers because they got so many numbers. But now this is another thing. It's not. It's a. And this is another thing that I've I've kind of been fond of this year. This is a titanium liner lock. I See? dig it. You know, because you don't have to worry about your fingers being on that lock bar, yep. and it's a solid, solid liner lock. You know, I I, I always make sure of that first because I know you know you can have some that are janky, but mm -hmm. you did a good job. So, that uh, one. so so you said this year especially have you noticed i mean because uh i got the the rock wall that's a liner lock i i got the uh yeah nice i got the the turbo from uh you know monterey bay knives does a lot of titanium liner locks i love it for the reason yes. you're talking about you really want to experience that smoothness you know if you don't have your your finger especially on a thin or a shallow yeah. short handle like that you know, it, it's, it's ideal. I, I love the experience. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, 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 I almost bought me a Christmas present last night because I like this knife. You know, it, it, it was, I think my number two pick this year. Yeah. Number two, I think yeah, it was, it was in the top three for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because it's an American company, they did a good job on it. Only made only ding that really for me was how high they had the pocket clip right here, mm -hmm. and I only feel it whenever I was doing the wood that heavy pressure cutting, mm -hmm. uh, it would dig into the back of my hand. Other than that, I could I could hold it around like I didn't it, I could avoid it. Um, but you know the my detent's pretty stout on this thing. And I know that that was something that they they had to go back to the drawing boards and make it stronger because I know uh, I think Bearded Gear got one of the first ones, I think, and said that the detent was a little soft. So mine's a little stronger. I wanted to buy – I had it in my cart, the thumb stud version of this knife. Mm -hmm. It was It's still in my cart. And I was – I even went do the, the begging, hey, can I please buy this knife for Christmas? <laughs> And I even got the yes, but <laughs> nice. I held off because I need to find out if the detent's the same as this one. I, I wouldn't better use it, you know. I yeah, my hands yeah. are just not built for that anymore. So I I want to make sure. I know a lot of uh, a lot of our in the community, our circle has has it. So I just need to talk to some of them first, make sure they dialed it back. And that's another great thing about this uh, community. I'm sure people be falling all over themselves to loan one to you to check out. So you can, you can kind of see where that fits for you. Yeah, we have, we have just an awesome, <laughs> our community is unlike anything. It's, I try to explain to some of my family members that kind of want to know why I love this hobby so much. And I've always loved the hobby, but whenever I found the community is whenever it became a special thing to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it just totally night and day difference. All right. Before I move on to your, I want to, uh, before we wrap, I want to, I want to talk about your, your top three uh, purchases of the whole year. But before we get to that, I want to finish up this kind of uh, over $50 kind of sub 200, wherever we are kind of in that super yeah. area. Um, what, what are the, what are the other two from that category you think we need to know about, uh, for people kind of wrapping up the year? Uh, let me see which side is that. Um, I tell you, uh, I just, I, am a late one on this one. The, the Kanwu Teo, hmm. I didn't like, I, I had seen it and I followed the, the Kickstarter campaign and everything. And I saw a lot of people review these early in the year. And uh, he sent me this one to review. I'm pretty darn impressed. Okay. So far, you know. What, I, what's, what's the story with Kunwu? Um, uh, just you know, a small designer, I guess you could say, because he um, 
is all Kickstarter campaigns from what I gather so far. And he's already got another. It's called the Tewu X that I actually backed because I like this one that much. Oh, nice. Um, it's a Axis style lock uh, version of this knife. Yep. With the only thing I didn't love, I think it has the little thumb dit like plates or whatever. It drives me nuts, but I can always fix that if I want. So you mean a, a plate on top of the blade, you mean? Yeah, I okay. think. I think I recall that. And that I don't know. I just I don't. I like a traditional thumb stud, but it's got you know the multiple deployments, the front flipper and the I guess you call it top flipper. Um, nice action. And I think one thing that kind of got me interested in this knife is. He was showing, like, you know, people. he listened really well and what we want out of a knife, and um, he was ro showing the Rockwell on him, and I think they were, like, 61 to 62. This is M390, and there's not a lot of companies doing that right now. Mm. So that was a, a big plus, yeah. you know. Um, Beautiful-looking knife, too, I yeah, guess. Yeah, definitely. And it has, like, it's not going to come through, but there's, like, a slight orange peel texture to it. Yeah, yeah, it's too it's too fine. You're not gonna see it through the camera right. right now. But that one, that one, another one that you know, I would, I would definitely pay attention to Kongu knives. Uh, he said he's got some stuff coming this year. Cool. Um, uh, a little bit more expensive. That one that another one that I just didn't feel like a lot of people really loved, and I just thought it was great. Is the Wee Knives of Spirit, or how do you say it? Oh, Donico. Uh, that is beautiful. What is I this? Think this is in the Esprit. Is it E S P R I T I T? Like Esprit? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That I, is, I didn't I always mess it up. So I only know that because uh, in the 80s, I loved the Lotus Esprit that uh, James Bond wrote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, but, a, I think that's a gorgeous looking knife. I mean, I think everything that Laconico yeah. makes is just yeah. very organic looking. Um, this thing is super comfortable. Uh, good slicer, uh, very smooth action. I mean, made by we, you can, you can do a nice slow roll, which is something I, I really enjoy. Um, uh, you can flip it out and it has, you know, for all those front flipper fans, you can front flip it very easily. And they have this one and an orange peel titanium with a satin blade. I, I prefer the look of this one more. I, I, and I, I've had this knife since blade show, you know, yeah. before they hit the thing. And I, I was like kind of shocked that it wasn't like a, wow, that's an awesome knife. <laughs> it seems like it would be because people do, uh, what is this three and a quarter inch blade? Probably. Um, yeah, somewhere in that area. So it, it looks to, to hit the sweet spot, but it's got everything else too. You know, it's got, it's got a, uh, an attractive, but very neutral, um, uh, drop point blade. Uh, neutral meaning it's not a crazy, but it's got that really nice swedge on top. It's very yeah, attractive. Um, who doesn't love a a thumb stud on bearings? And then and then the handle looks. I mean, the whole thing looks like a very classic package. I'm surprised it yeah. hasn't. Uh, and I mean, I'm not saying you know it, it it might be super popular, but just not in a lot of people chiming in about it. You yeah, know, yeah, you don't hear about it. Didn't much. make anybody's list that I saw. I mean, but. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to say that because it's fucking yellow. <laughs> What's that? I said, I, I, I just said the stupidest thing ever. I was like, it didn't make any lists I saw. That's because I didn't watch any of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I feel like a moron for saying that. Uh, but I, I, should I say, I don't feel like it's going to make any. I, I don't know why. I just, I, I don't, I don't remember even seeing a whole bunch of reviews on it. Yeah, um, yeah me and, neither. You know, there might be. You know, Cool thing that in it because you just went by it this year is we've had so many designs from people in our community and that yes. makes me so happy. Yeah, me too. Did you happen to get in on that one that I did that review on not too long ago? Um, it's a young twenty-something-year-old kid, his first design, and he knocked it out of the park. Mm -mm, I'm I not am sure which one you're it, talking about. You know the uh, you know Scott Cook. You know that that custom maker that makes the um, kind of looks like a Sabenza esque, but it's an integral. And I, it's, yes, it's I do, yeah, I know what you're the, the Lotus, no, Lok, Loksha, Loksha, yes. or whatever it's called. Is well, that... it 
kind of has that design language with the blade uh -huh. um, and the handle a little bit. You know, I mean, you, he he definitely got influence from maybe Chris Reeve, like all the good players, you know. Uh -huh. And the knife has a custom look and feel. I was fortunate enough to handle it. <laughs> I pre-ordered the thing not even before before I even did the review because I, I wanted to make sure I had my spot. Because it, it, it's that good, and I'm excited to see where that kid goes. Oh, cool. Because, you know, great job on him. And then seeing um, Casey from Knives Fast, oh, yeah. that makes me so happy. Seeing all yeah. of our people. Uh, Jake from Bearded Gear, I, I bought one of his knives, too. Love mm -hmm. it. That's a cool knife. Uh, you know, it's cool. I'm waiting for Bob DeMarco to make one, too. But... <laughs> oh, I will. Someday. <laughs> And 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 stop. Are you still it. are you still uh doing that? Are you still doing it too? Robin? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I um so I haven't uh I haven't worked in steel in a while. I've been making these little G10 uh um oh, that's sweet. sort of a, a pick call style get off me yes. things. And uh, I think I'm going to um I don't know. I, I think they're easy enough to make and right now time wise I I just don't have a lot of time to sink into it, but I can bust one of these out pretty quickly. So make hey, some. They look cool and, too. I bet you yeah, can sell those easy. Yeah, probably. You know, sell them for twenty bucks or something. You know, and and uh, they're good little weapony things. You know, I tell you, they, they definitely can because G ten strong, like really strong. It is strong. I've done I've done some informal testing with this, just jabbing it through cardboard, and and it doesn't take too long for the chisel ground edge to to dull but then you just hit it with sandpaper yeah. or a file and boom it's back to it's back or to you had to rub it. it against the darn cement you know yeah, yeah, you had yeah. to or a yeah. rug a carpet uh, a yeah. short short pile carpet it's amazing what you can sharpen uh okay so nick i i want to hear and hopefully uh a knife i'm really hoping is in these three uh pops up but i want to hear your your three favorite purchases of 2021 whether it was a knife that came out in 2021 uh, no matter what the price, whatever. Uh, let me see. Wait, let me grab one of them right here. Sure thing. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't think to grab this just because I don't I don't tend to show my higher end knives that much just because mm -hmm. I don't ever want people. I don't want to feel like they think I'm what they call it. So called flexing because I'm not that type of person. But um uh, this one is just one that I've lusted over for years. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I got three of them right here in front of me. Okay. First one. Oh, is God. The NCC uh, and Rob Carter BBM. I just think this is the most stunning looking knife. The the contrast with those colors and the, the finish on this uh, scales even to the the micro milling lines on this uh, Tanto blade, I, I've always thought this was beautiful. I tried to make the the Ontario Trinity this so many times, and I've, I've I still have one mm. that I've modded to look kind of like this. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. But yeah, yeah. I whenever I w got my phone rang at Blade Show that. I was third alternate because nobody showed up for the other two. I sounded like a schoolgirl. <laughs> Everybody probably heard me. Oh my god! Yeah! <laughs> Freaking out because you know I never. I mean, I knew I wasn't. I'm not. A, I'm not really the one to buy uh, stuff on the secondary for outrageous yeah. prices. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna say I've never done it, but I try to stay away from that. And uh, I probably would have never bought this if I wouldn't have got it from this table. It wasn't cheap, but it would have been even w way more expensive if yeah. I would have bought it on the secondary, you know? Right. God, what a beautiful piece. Um, then, of course, the uh, the Arius non-flipper. So cool. You know, it's something that I guess you, you probably would never hear me say any other time, but... Uh, I almost wish I had the flipper version of this. Oh, interesting. Why the only that? reason is because the detent on at least mine is still dialed for flipper. Oh, okay. And it's got that like pop detent, you know, like I can feel it 
jumping out of that the the yeah. detent hole. Yeah. And I, I'm sure I could fix that, but for the price of these knives, I'm not going to do that myself. Right. I'm just not. Yeah. <laughs> I could take that chance. But man, comfortable. One of the best actions. Uh, I mean, that's tightened down and the hollow grind. Mm -hmm. You just feel the thinness. Um, have you have you checked out one of these with the? Okay, so without so, the uh, flipper, I had I had never experienced one or held one at all in my life until Blade Show in June, and then the one that I was playing with the most. Uh, I first of all, I was blown away. I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta check these out. Same thing happened with Vero, uh, and I bought, I bought the same. <laughs> yeah, that was bought, the number three. Oh, okay. I, well, I bought the same synapse you did, and and I, I went up to to yeah, I went up to the table and I was like, I I experienced it, and I was like, wow, okay, I see what everyone's freaking out about. Same thing happened with me with the Koenig. I went up to the table and picked up a. a the the flipper delete i think they had just come come out with it maybe um mm -hmm. or or the anyway i picked up a non-flipper version of it and i i was i was stunned you know at, at the engineering of it and how um well first of all i don't love how it looks unless it's in person like when i see it in pictures i'm kind of like eh. yeah and then having it in hand i was like yeah this really is beautiful you know turning it around and actually looking at it and there's something you know, uh, something sometimes touching something makes it more appealing to the eye, you know, feeling that hollow grind and looking yep. at it at the same time, like, wow, it's amazing, you know, uh, so thin, but also so, you know, capable. Yeah, definitely. And I think this, this is probably the coolest thing for me is on my channel. And this has been a long time ago because, um, a buddy, he, you know um, Tony Meator, or mm -hmm. yes. Well, a long time ago, he's you know he's the one that created my logo for my oh, channel. Okay. okay. And around that time, I was getting loners coming in, you know, back and forth. And Tony was like a huge supporter of the channel, and he's always been. And I had I've had the generation one and two on the channel and now the three and it's so cool because literally the progression has been such an, an amazing jump from one to the next to the next and talk about a company that i love the fact that they only have what three designs i think they yeah. got this the mini goblin and now the mini one of these i don't know if they have anything else but I love that that they make try to make it as perfect as they possibly can before they start even thinking about the mini of this, you know? Yeah. yeah. I wanted one of those minis, but I wasn't gonna pay that ridiculous like <laughs> I saw that auction price where it was at and I was like, oh no, <laughs> no. I would have had to sell all the stuff I bought at Blade Show uh, yeah. just to even put my name in the middle of that somewhere. Jeez. Oh, all right, Nick. So what's your what's your top? My top is gonna have to be the BBM. I mean that oh, okay. is I one mean, that well, I've, I'm I've, sorry, the third in this list. I mean oh the third was this uh the axon frame lock. Axon, okay. Okay, now I like the axon so much that I have this one, um the natural micarta with the satin blade and natural micarta with the black blade. Oh man. <laughs> And this one, that I'm probably going to sell one of the natural micarta ones. Uh, but this one right here is just, uh, I like them both for different reasons. This one feels like more robust. I, I probably shouldn't have got the hand rub on this one. I don't know if the, I doubt the blades are interchangeable because it's a frame lock. But um, when I first saw these blades, I thought it was the ugliest thing for some reason. I thought this, yeah. I don't know why, it, just, it looked like a broken blade to me. But just like you said earlier, once I got it in hand and experienced it, I fell in love with this. I always liked the Synapse because it's just a classic, you know, Beautiful, blade shape. Yeah. I wasn't really sure about this thing, but now after using it, genius. Absolutely genius. Yeah, yeah. A absolutely the, the hallmark <laughs> of a knife nerd designing a knife, you know. Yeah. I was actually there for Vero from the ground up. 
Mm. When I worked with Best Tech, he his before he even started the company, and he he reminded me of this. I didn't even remember <laughs> that he brought me that. You know, I forgot the name of that design, the original one. Oh yeah. He uh, handed it to me, and he's like, "What do you think?" And he was like, um, "And I interpreted basically from him to Selena, the owner or the owner's wife." And we went back and forth, and I helped. <laughs> it was oh, cool. so cool going around, you know, yeah. making a complete, you know, circle. <laughs> it's like, hey, Joseph, don't don't forget the, the little people. <laughs> yeah. He's such a nice guy. He is a nice guy. What a, what a great outfit. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of the people we've spoken to here, family businesses, I love that. I love that sort of family involvement. Hey, Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing uh, a small portion of your picks for 2021. Uh, I do urge viewers to go. Uh, you're probably already subscribed to Stasa, Stasa 23 on uh, YouTube and Instagram, but but check him out on YouTube and, and watch his uh, end of year recap videos. I always look forward to, to those uh, from Nick and, and from a select few others, like that yearly roundup, remind us of what came out. Uh, the year can seem quick and it can seem long it depends on how you're looking at it and with knives sometimes it seems long like a year like 2021 a lot of knives came out yeah uh so anyway go go check out staza uh nick thank you so much for coming on the show i really always a blast it. bob love it all right always sir. love coming on well uh so maybe i can get a, a 10 more minutes out of you and we can put it up for the patrons yeah sure all right awesome man thanks uh mm -hmm. have a good one sir have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. There he goes, Nick Matassa, Stasa23, one of the quote-unquote trusted names in knife YouTubery that I mention all the time. Uh, that, you know, These are people who stand in for me getting all these knives. These are people I know and trust uh, who, who really have the have the right idea uh, about evaluating knives. Uh, we are going to talk for, I'm going to talk to Nick for another 10, 15 minutes or so, ask him a couple of questions. We might not want to go far and wide. If you want to hear a conversation like that, you can do so by joining us on Patreon and uh, you'll hear interview extras from every interview we do here. And you just do that by going to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, be sure to check us out on Wednesday for the midweek supplemental. When I talk about new knives in my collection and knife news, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, Thursday night knives, uh, you know, you know, Thursday night knives, join us there. That's uh, Thursday, 10 PM Eastern standard time, uh, every week. All right. That's it for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.